as we go to the word of the Lord tonight, we just want God, we just want God to talk to our hearts tonight. This is not about me. This is all about him. Praise God. I'm just wanting to yield this vessel just to minister as God wants to minister. See some life touched. A miracle happened in somebody's life. Somebody set free. Through the lovely name of Jesus Christ. Whoo, such a presence of the Holy Ghost. Mark 16, 17 through 20. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall. Do you hear that word, shall? And they shall, brother, recover. These are not Pastor Royce's words. These are the words of the Lord. So then after the Lord has spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and set on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. <laughs> signs following they have, amen and with the help of the Lord tonight with his anointing I want to minister unto you living in the realm of the miraculous living in the realm of the miraculous can we lift our hands and love the Lord right now hallelujah Lord Jesus we thank you God for the spirit of the Holy Ghost that we feel in this place tonight. And we are living right here, right now, in the realm of the miraculous hand of God that has already moved in this place tonight, already touched bodies, and wants to continue to do miraculous things. Hallelujah! In the name of Jesus, anoint the word of God to our hearts tonight and minister, Lord, to this, these lips of clay like only you can do. And you get all the glory, you get all the praise, and you get all the honor. Hallelujah in the lovely name of Jesus. Hallelujah in the lovely name of Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. You may be seated in the lovely name of Jesus. Hallelujah, glory to your name, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Living in the realm of the miraculous. Praise God. Well, I believe you're here tonight because it's exactly what you want to do. And that's exactly what I want to do. Praise God. There's so many needs around us. We just got to realize once again who we are. Thank God for that message to my heart that we are ambassadors to the King of Glory. Signs and wonders and miracles have happened and follow. They will follow you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Because you're out front as an ambassador, the signs of God and the miracles of God want to follow each one of us. Lord, once again, just help us to realize who we are. We are ambassadors of the King, and He's given us full authority through the name of Jesus Christ. There's signs and wonders that want to follow us in this service tonight as we preach the Word of God. Let our faith reach out and please the Master. Faith moves the hand of God. Fear wants to grip us. The only fear that we're supposed to have is the fear of the Lord. But because we are human beings, 
We have things that crowd in on us. Health situations, family situations, financial situations. All manner of things want to crowd in and we begin to. There's times that I felt like something was right around my throat choking me. I was so fearful. Seemingly not knowing the unknown and, and we're all scared of the fear of failure. But I say, God, may we push these fears aside in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You came, you gave everything. And you have said you wanted us to be your ambassadors. We're the body of Christ. Representatives of the king. And as that ambassador went to that country and began to, because they were having, there was a missionary, and uh, I believe it was down in El Salvador or one of those countries down in there, and they were having such an, a, a horrible, horrible experiment for the, for the missionary that was in that area. They, the the uh, heads of other religions and stuff were just giving them such a hard time. So being appointed as ambassador, and he's of the United Pentecostal Church, it was no coincidence, he went down there and when he contacted all these leaders and said, I'm going to be there such and such a date, you be there, they all showed up. He got up there and preached the word, he preached the message of the death, the burial, and resurrection. There was, I believe it was over 300 of those leaders that was baptized and filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Because an ambassador came home. He came there and he said, now I'll tell you what. He looked at that missionary and he says, now I'm appointing that missionary art right there to be the head of all these religions. You've got a question, you've got a need, you come to this man. He went from the bottom to the top in just a moment's time. I'm talking about a miraculous working God. And to see all, there was Hindus, there was all manner of people there and God moved on them and filled them with the Holy Ghost. And that missionary that was having such a horrible time in that country turned around to be the leader of that country. Isn't God amazing? And you and I, maybe tonight you may be being crowded by something. And God wants you to realize as a child of God, if you're here and not a child of God, you can become one. But if you're here and you're a child of God, there's some things that's been crowding in on you, maybe for some time now. I would love to see the power of God get a hold of your heart and get a hold of those situations, begin to change those things in the name of Jesus Christ. As we live in the realm of the miraculous, of the supernatural power of God, this is a very spiritual world. We must let the mightiest spirit control us and lead us, and guide us, and that's through the lovely name of Jesus Christ. Don't you love, can you give the Lord a hand clap of praise tonight? Hallelujah, glory! Well, these signs shall follow them that believe. Folks, we need to be apostolic. What's that mean? What they did in, in Acts, the apostles. We still, those things still happen today. And we don't need to live beneath our privileges. Praise God, Jesus did awesome things while he was here, didn't he? But what did he say in John 14, 12 through 15? What did Jesus say to us? He didn't say, when I leave this place, it's all over. Did he? Well, that would have been different if he said that, but this is what he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. He's talking about the church of the living God. He's talking about you. Did he do miracles? Was he in the realm? Was Jesus in a realm of the miraculous? He was the miracle. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And he let them know that they would do all those things also. But he didn't stop there, folks. He went beyond that, didn't he? 
you and I can choose to live in the realm of the supernatural or we can choose to be choked by fear and by doubt and by unbelief. And I say, Lord, get that out of me. If there's any there, yes, Lord, I believe and forgive me for any unbelief. Hallelujah. I hope there's faith. And I believe there is faith building in this place right here. Because God wants to heal somebody. God wants to refill somebody with the Holy Ghost or even fill somebody with the Holy Ghost that's never had the Holy Ghost. Praise God. And he can do it right here, right now, in this place tonight. Praise God. Do you believe God? God can do miracles in this place tonight. Hallelujah. Do you believe God? According to your faith, let it be done under the authority of the name of Jesus Christ. Let it be done unto you. Hallelujah. I was talking with our brother here tonight, and he said, oh, God is just so awesome. He said, I just can't find the proper words to tell him how great he is. I can't either. There's not words good enough in the English language to be able to describe how wonderful, how great he is. The things I've seen him do in my own body. Sitting at my desk the other day, I'm legally blind in this eye. Have been since a baby. As you know, if you come talk to me, sometimes you wonder who I'm looking at. So, if I'm standing there and I, I see you looking over here and looking over there and wondering where you're looking, I'll just go ahead and close this eye and say, I'm right here. This is the one I'm seeing you with. Praise God. And uh, so I tell some, you know, I <clears throat> have a few little imperfections blind in this eye and I'm deaf in this ear so if I'm trying to see you and hear you at the same time I'm going hallelujah but with that said there was something going on with this eye the last few months I was at my office and I had an awful lot of things to do and I needed to be able to to see it just happened here about a week or two ago and I'm sitting there, and I have all this work to do. I'm on my iPad, and I'm doing this work, and all of a sudden, everything starts going fuzzy. And I can't see. I can't see properly. And I'm trying to strain to see. I said, Jesus, we do live in the realm of the miraculous. Will you touch my eye right now so I can do this work? And within a few moments, the, play, the page is clear. And let me tell you this, that's happened to me now for a while. And all I can do at that point is get away from anything from on the written page or my computer or anything and just go rest my eyes maybe for the rest of the day. But I needed to get this stuff done. Didn't have this other eye to rely on. I know he can heal this one too. He can straighten it up. No matter if it's from a child or wherever. We know that according to the word of God. The blind man was healed in the name of Jesus, right? And the lame man was healed, wasn't he? Never had walked ever in his life. Praise God. He still fills with the Holy Ghost. He still heals lame man, according to in the third chapter. He still does it today of Acts. Folks, he's not gone out of business. You and I just got to accept we want to live in the realm of the miraculous. As we went to Winter Fire this year down in Connecticut, it seemed like that was the whole theme of the trail, was the miraculous hand of God. Sister Marquez would told us about an incident where she had been preaching and she had been preaching on faith. Like we're doing tonight and preaching on the miracles. This lady walked up to her and said, Sister, will you pray for me? Sure. She says, well, I've had some physical problems and uh, I've wanted to have just a young lady children 
She said, do you believe God can heal me? Well, yeah, of course God can heal you. She said, well, I want to have a child, but I, I need to tell you that I've had a complete hysterectomy. And all of a sudden, Sister Marquez stood there and says, well, you didn't tell me that. She said, well, sister, you, you've been talking about healing tonight. You've been talking about the miraculous. I just thought that God can do the miraculous. And she says, I've got to admit to you, folks, I'm standing there. Whoa. <laughs> yes, I did. I have been preaching that tonight. But... But, but, it's impossible for this woman to have a baby. There's no place to hold a baby. We don't have anything to work with there. And she admitted she was just kind of, but yes, yeah, I'll, I'll pray for you, I'll pray for you. Do you believe that God, yes, that's why I came. She laid hands on that woman and prayed. Within a few months, she wasn't feeling very good one day. To the place that she went to the doctor. The doctor examined her and he says, the same doctor that did the operation on her examined her. He kissed I, 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 can't, I, I can't believe this. Uh, she, he said, you are pregnant. You are going to have a baby. He said, that is not even possible because I did the operation on you. You can't have a baby. This just happened a little while ago, folks. I'm telling you, our God is still in the miracle working business. Our God is still, our God is still, our God is still in the miracle work of business. And your, what your miracle is, is not too hard for God. What my miracle is, is not too hard. And within moments, my eyesight came back and I finished all that work and, and never came back. It started the other day a little bit and I said, Jesus, I need it. And all day today I've been studying and I've been going through it and there's not one time has it come back. Today, as I was, the other day, it started to come back a little bit, and I said, Jesus, Jesus, you healed me. He's taking it away again. Sometimes we got to get tough with, you know, the enemy will want to cut, bring that thing back on us. I was miraculously healed one night, and I was in Augusta, and they had a special service, and I was miraculously healed of a back condition. Severe back condition. God healed me instantaneously that night. I was in my car. I was a salesman on the road at that time. I covered a lot of road. And for a back condition, riding is one of the worst things, right? I was on my way to Skowhegan, Maine, from where I live. I was partway there, and that same thing struck me just like a knife in my back. And immediately I said, devil, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. And instantly that pain left and went. The enemy wants to bring him sometimes and God heals you. He wants to bring it back on to you by a symptom. Praise God. But the power of the Holy Ghost is still just as real as it was back in the book of Acts. Folks that are still receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost just like in the book of Acts. They're still being healed just like in the book of Acts. Well, that woman had about three children, four children. Praise God. We serve a God of the impossibility. And I just want us tonight in this place right now to get, oh, the Holy Ghost is moving here, folks. Hallelujah. I believe we are in the realm of the supernatural power of God. You can leave 
with a miracle tonight. You can leave. <laughs> There's a reason why God laid this on my heart. Because I believe somebody was going to leave this place with their miracles. Like, because you can. May I hear our testimony from this man right down here, the Noah, fully recovered. There's no sign of it left in his body. In the name of Jesus Christ, we take authority over that, brother. We take authority over that in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Jesus. Brother Herring was another one that was ministering to us at the winter fire. And as he was ministering, he says, you know, after one of my services, I had this young man walk up to me and says, Brother Herring? He says, yes, sir. Young man, what can I do for you? He said, well, he says, my grandma is very, very sick. I don't remember now what it was, but it was really, very, very, very serious. Do you remember, honey, what that was at? She was sick with, but anyway, she was very sick. And he said, uh, would you come pray for my ground? He said, well, I probably won't be able to do that. He said, but do you believe God can heal her? Yes, sir. He said, okay, good. And I don't know if these are the exact words that he used, but it was to, to this connotation. He said, well, he said, this is what you need to tell her. When you go, and you're going to go, and you're going to lay hands on her, and you tell her this. Oh, just a minute, sir. Just a minute. I've got to get something to write on. So he goes, and he, gets, he pulls a piece of paper out, and he gets his pen. He says, okay, go ahead. So he writes down. He says, well, tell her this. On the authority of the name of Jesus Christ. On the authority of the name of Jesus Christ. I command, it may not be exactly these words, but you know what, because I don't remember exactly what he said, but to this effect. I command these things to come out of her and let her loose and heal her right now. I command these things to come out of her in the name of Jesus Christ. Okay? All right. So he goes over to his grandmother's house, this young man, and uh, he's not a faith healer. It's not his business. He's a young man that had to write it down. And he walked over to his grandmother and he says, Well, Graham, I'm here to pray for you. Oh, good. Oh, good. Oh, that, that's good. Well, just a minute. He pulls the paper out of his pocket. He goes over by his grandmother. He puts his hand on her. He opens up the paper. On the authority, he's reading it. On the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command the sickness to leave your body. Amen. God healed that woman instantly. there was faith in that. Your faith can claim your healing. Praise God. It didn't have to be the evangelist that God uses on a regular basis to see people healed. He used a young boy that wrote it down on a piece of paper and had to read it off the paper. I'm talking about he was in, the, even though he may not have felt all the goosebumps, he was in the realm. That young man was in the realm of the miraculous right at that moment. And he believed his God could do it even if he had to read it off a piece of paper. Do you understand what I'm talking about? And do you feel that realm right here, right now? Oh, God. It is. He 
He's still the mighty God. Angels can still unlock, knock, unlock, lock doors. We read through the book of Acts and we see all these things happening. Philip cast out spirits and healed the sick in chapter 8. Do you believe that still can happen today? Do you still believe we can live in that same realm? Acts is still being written. Oh, I'm excited about what God wants to do for somebody in this place. Somebody right here in this place right now. Oh, we can go have church tonight. Didn't we say we we're going to have church tonight? Well, we're going to have church tonight. We are heaven. I'm so glad I'm in church. I'm glad what I feel. How about it, my friend? Do you are you glad you're in the house of God and feeling what you're feeling? Ooh. Hallelujah. Peter, used by God, restored life. Dorcas in Joppa in the ninth chapter of Acts. The dead is still being risen from the dead. I've personally seen a lady, a little Catholic lady that had stage four cancer in her brain and been given weeks to live. She was one of my customers when I was on the road. I said, Dottie, I said, do you mind if I take you before our church? Because we believe in faith healing. She said, you know, I believe that too. I said, oh, that's awesome. She was almost like a mother to me. I put my arm around her and I said, Dottie, we believe God can heal you. We brought it one Sunday morning to the church. We stood and, oh, the presence of God, Brother Trail, the presence of God came in that place. God completely healed that woman from four-stage cancer of her brain. She had two massive, one big mass like that on her brain, another smaller one like that. Cancer. She just had, brothers, all she had was just a few weeks to live. They said, we got to operate right now. She says, no, you don't. She said, whatever time I got, I got and she lived for years beyond eight, maybe eight to ten years beyond that before she died. God's still in the healing business, folks. Do you have something that's impossible in your life? Why don't you turn it over Him tonight? Why don't you begin to live in the realm? Hallelujah, all of the miraculous, all of the supernatural power of our God that wants to set you free. Oh, Hallelujah! <laughs> Still in the business. And he loves his people and he loves to do miracles. He wants signs and wonders following them that believe, oh God, I want them following me all the time. I want to be full of faith. I want to be full of the power of God. I want to live in that realm of the supernatural. Luke 5, 4 through 7. Praise God. And when he had left speaking and said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down thy nets for a draw. And Simon answered unto him, Master, we have toiled all night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word I will let down. You know what? His faith wasn't what you'd call stellar. Come on. But what did he do? What did he do? Oh, the power of obedience unto the word of God. And when we just say, well, Lord, my faith might be a little weak, but I hear, nevertheless, Lord, here I am. I'm going to bring this thing unto you. Praise God. That woman of faith and that one, that evangelist. How would you pronounce her name? Mark Mark. Mark Marquez, there we go. Her faith wasn't very good that night. That lady wanted to be prayed for. And 
So I don't know, and I don't think it was her faith that did the work. Even though she was a tool and instrument to minister, to minister the Word, the Word didn't return void. And tonight, this Word is not returning back to God on void because it's touching somebody's life right here, right now, in this place. I'm praying that your life will never be the same, but the miracle, miraculous hand of God will get a hold of you. God knows what you need. God knows. Will you reach out to Him tonight and live in the realm of the miraculous and receive what God has for you? We are living in the last days and better trail if we ever get a hold of this thing. Oh, God, let us get a hold of it like you really want us to get a hold of it. Because you don't live to yourself. The miracle that God's going to perform in you, other people are going to see it. And they're going to know, wow, wow, wow. All through the book of Acts. They went from house to house, healing the sick, raising the dead. And there was just a mighty outpouring of God. There's going to be an outpouring of God through this, this, this valley right here. Brother Trail, miraculous things have happened. But miraculous things are going to happen. I believe in a more of a greater way than we've ever seen. Saints of God, do you hear what I'm saying? Are we ambassadors of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Praise God. Do we have the power of our mighty God to reach out and to do these miracles in the name of Jesus? Hallelujah. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. And they beckoned unto the other partners which were in the other ships. And they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships so that they began to sink. Praise God. Brother, they didn't have one fish. They were destitute right there. They had worked all night. But they had to bring their partners their nets were busted. There's somebody here tonight that's got a financial need and you are so worried about it. Can you let your net down at the word of the Lord? <laughs> somebody <out there. laughs> Listen to the voice of God. Right now, begin to live in the realm of the miraculous. You say, Brother Roy, that's impossible. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about living in the realm that God, in an impossible situation, reaches down. That was too. They fished all night. But guess what? Jesus knew where the fish were. They had fished on that side of the boat. They had fished on that side of the boat, and then that side of the boat, and that side of the boat. We've been out here, Lord, all night. But that was the Lord, and the Lord speaking in this place tonight. Oh, Brother Roy, Brother Roy, Brother Roy, I've tried that, Brother Roy. I've tried that. I've tried this. I've tried that. I've tried that. I've tried that. Put down the net. God knows where the blessings are. It doesn't have to be possible. Matter of fact, he's a specialist at the impossible. You're feeling what I'm feeling. Who see that? Oh, can we just love the Lord right now? Who said that? Who said that? Sweep over this place, God. Sweep over this place, God, right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. May we live in the realm of the miraculous Lord Jesus right now, God, I pray in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, we're going to open up this altar here in a little bit and I want you to come and receive your miracle. 
I want you to come and live in the realm of the miraculous. Hallelujah. There may be those in your family that needs God. There may be so many impossible situations in your life, but it's time for us to believe Jesus. Lord, let my faith touch you, Lord. Let my faith touch you, Jesus. Praise God, Luke 5 and 12, and we're going to close here, my friends. I'm closing from preaching, but that just means you can come here and just let God have his way in this altar today. Let God have his way in your life. Let God have his way in the impossible situations of your family members or things outside of this place. Praise God. Your finances, your bodies, your spirit, your soul. Praise God. Hallelujah. This is not a coincidence that I'm here tonight preaching this message. This is not, Brother Trail, this is not a coincidence. Praise God. I don't know, Brother Trail, at times why God brings other men in to preach messages that I've been just preaching. But he does. And my people get a hold of it and God does some wonderful things. That's a good man. I know he, he preaches good messages and on faith and things like that. But there's not a coincidence that I'm here telling you. We need to live in the realm of the miraculous. That's in the realm that these things are impossible to happen. I'm telling you, Jesus is still doing the impossible. What you need, He can take care of. You are precious people. Hallelujah. There's no respecter of persons. He loves you as much as he loves anybody. And he cares about your impossible situation. And he is touched by the feelings of your infirmities. Let's stand together. And it came to pass when he was in the certain city, behold, a man full of leprosy, who seeing Jesus fell on his face and besought him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And he put forth his hand, and touched him, saying, I will. <laughs> I will. How about it, my friend? Are you trying to reach Jesus tonight? I said, are you trying, are you taking your petition to the Lord? Why don't you bring that petition to this altar right now? Why don't you bring it and come to the Lord and see what God will say? He was full of leprosy, eating him up. But he said, I will be thou clean. And immediately the leprosy departed from him. And that's the same God that's in Tamos tonight. That's the same God. He's here tonight. Will you come? And will you receive what God has for you? In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. God bless you. Hallelujah.